Hey guys, how you doing? I'm HexDSL. Hello there. Today we're looking at Slay the Spire, which is a game that's interesting because it takes an existing genre and just puts a little spin on it, just, a, just enough like a half spin. And you go, ooh, that's clever. Well, at least I did anyway. Um, Slay the Spire is by Mega Crit Games, who uh, provided me with my key for this. It's currently in early access and it's £11.99. Um, obviously, if you see this video, it might change because that's the nature of early access and you have to go, yeah, it changes. There might, you, might, you might be a first person shooter by the time you play. Probably won't be a first person. I don't know where I'm going with any of this. Again, I keep getting myself in these, <laughs> get myself in these hypothetical holes. I should really stop doing this. Um, anyway, Slay the Spire. It describes, how does it describe itself? Fused card games and roguelikes together to make the best single player deck builder we could. Hmm. Yeah, kind of weird. Uh, we'll talk about the game in a second. And there's some uh, video of the game, that, well, an animated GIF of the game there. There's some features and tons of unlockables. Procedurally generated level, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, a hundred different, procedurally generated levels is not entirely true because they're not levels as much as encounters, but anyway, we'll let that go. 200 fully implemented cards, 50 unique combat encounters, and a hundred different items can be found. Um, two core characters that each uh, have their own unique set of cards. Interesting enough. Uh, yeah, dynamic deck building, ever changing inspire. Mm, okay. And it needs a computer with color, and you'll be, <laughs> you'll be, if you can run a desktop environment in 2017, you'll be fine. Uh, because the game is actually quite straightforward. Now, uh, first of all, first things first, this is the game. You'll notice it's running a window. The reason it's running a window is I've got three screens. As, um, as There you go, three screens. And, uh, ooh, three screens. My camera's delayed. That's weird. Look, ooh, that's, it's, sorry, it was, it, it's delayed. It's odd. Um, it happens sometimes. I don't know why. Uh, if I put it in full screen, it, the reason I'm showing you the three screens is because when I put it in full screen, it fills all three screens. Which is quite an oversight, so I have to have it in windowed mode. Now I'll put it in a 14 foot by 900 window here, because that's one of my preferred resolutions if I'm playing windowed. I don't need it to fill the whole screen, you know? I'm happy with 14 foot by 900. Anyway, uh, for your benefit here, guys, what I have done is I've, uh, I've just captured just the game here, so you guys can see just the game, and I've also sized it up so my head isn't cover anything. But once, I don't know why I have my face on this video, to be totally honest, it's almost... Irrelevant, just adds a little touch of personality. Maybe something I should keep for streaming and get my face off the main videos. Anyway, uh, what is early access? Uh, the first thing it tells you is that we're in early access. I kind of like that. I kind of like the fact it's like, look, dude, this is this is going to change, which I kind of like. Um, climb the spire. Uh, interesting art style here. Nice animated background. No stock assets being used as far as I can see anyway. Um, so look at the options menu. Full screen, full screen borders, both result in large screens and the quality control is not implemented yet so the access fine with that absolutely fine with that yep all this stuff uh display summon up damage or some like preferences for gameplay mechanics here exit game and return so you got an exit there and an exit up here now i like that and that might sound strange because a lot of games recently i've noticed you have to hit the cog hit the options to exit that seems to be a thing we're seeing a lot of indie games recently so they put the exit button in there and on the main menu which i'm like that's cool like, give people options on how they want to exit, which is fine. Uh, we've got play, we've got statistics, uh, we've got lots of stuff here. And the text message right on cue. And then we hit play and we'll, uh, we'll look. We've got two characters we can choose from. We've got this guy, the Ironclad, with 80 health, 99 gold. And Burning Blood, at the end of combat, deal 6 HP. And, uh, there you go. The Silent, uh... Uh, Ring of Snakes at the end of the start of each combat draws two additional cards. Interesting. But we've got less HP and same amount of gold. So there's two unique characters. Apparently they have different cards, but this is the one I've been playing because it's awesome. So let's embark. There you go. Uh, try another. See, obviously, because we've just died. So it's like, yeah. And we've got the option to talk here. We <laughs> just talk. Uh, reach the city to receive my blessing. It's a giant whale, obviously. And we want to go. Look at this. Here. And we're right now we're here. So we can still where to start and then we can go up different paths. Now this path here seems like the path of least resistance in all fairness because there's less crossover. But this one goes all over the place, so we're gonna start here. Well that's what I want to start right here. Um so there you go. Interesting art style. Very sort of um it's very hand drawn, uh, and I don't see that a lot in these games. Now when I said at the beginning of the video, it's, a, it's like slightly alters the existing art style, is I love the crap out of Dungeon Rushers, right? I love Dungeon Rushers. <laughs> it's a game I really enjoy. Uh, and uh, and this, what this does is instead of putting the skills on the side that are set and leveled up, your skills are cards, which I believe can be leveled up. I haven't got that far in the game yet to really dig into that. But uh, And you've got mana here, and they call it energy, it's mana here. So when I cast this, it's going to use this card. 
See, that card's gone now into the burn pile. And I'm going to go, uh, okay, to heal damage. I'll just point the thing wherever I want, which is really nicely animated. Look, it's really nice. I like that. Uh, and that use again, we're down to one left, so we can do we can use another block here. Now, that's my turn gone. So those are my skills for this turn. Just like if there's down the side in like another sort of one of these uh, these type of dungeon roguelike combat things. I should check genre names. Uh, I think people get too hung up on what genre something because they just don't play a good game they'll enjoy. So this guy's now got aggressive. This enemy intends to attack for eight damage. Um at the end of its turn it gains three strength. So the longer it's alive, the more deadly it gets. That's interesting. So uh, we've got now new, we've got we've got like new cards now in our deck. So again, we might have a whole different skill. There might be one skill in our deck that's going to come out midway. This is interesting because there are card games like this which are great, and there are dungeon crawling games, sort of dungeon crawling, dungeon exploration games that are like this. Dungeon Rush has been one of my favourites, um, and this game sort of takes the two. It's like the exploration element of the dungeon the game is missing from this game because it's focusing on the deck build inside of it more. Um, which I really like, and then uh, the fact that you get a different hand of cards every time means you potentially you've got hot, like you can have a whole different hand. Like the, I've got a skill in my deck that's three uh, energy, so I just use that, and that's my whole turn over. But as it is, we need it's forty six of fifty two, the uh, forty six of fifty two. So we need to deal some damage before we get ourselves in a pickle. Then we'll deal three lots of damage to him, and um, we've got eight. We've got full health. He's going to hit us now, probably hurt us, um, but there's not a lot we can do. We haven't got health. And then end turn, enemy turn. He's gonna, he's gonna hit me for eight. There you go. Hit me for eight. As he, as explained, as intended. Um, so he's now he, because he's got more strength now. He's gonna hit me harder. So I should probably focus on uh, on healing. So let's see, I'll um, defense. I'll block. So I've got five points of block, which essentially means he's gonna get through that before he can damage me. Um, I can get that up to ten, no problem. Um, but I can also deal eight damage, apply vulnerable for two turns. That sounds great. Let's use two points for that. So he's now vulnerable. Look. Uh, takes fifty percent more damage from attacks for two turns. That's cool. So I'm gonna get a hit now, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna put my health bar down. Because he's, there you go. Because he's got through my armor, and then he's taken started to work on my health. Now, as it is, he's gonna take more damage, fifty percent more damage. So I should fire that one. There you go. Nine damage. So I just, I just want to hammer as much damage as I can this turn. Yay! See strategy. Really interesting, see? Now, spoils. We can skip rewards, but, well, would you? So, 18 gold, thank you very much. A block potion, yeah. Add card to your deck. Now, this is the mechanic I enjoy. Uh, so, now we get to pick a card, and that goes in our deck, and that's just in our deck now, which is what you want. Obviously, we increase our deck size. So, gain 8 block and draw 1 guard, uh, one card. Mm. Deal 6 damage. Deals plus 2 damage for each strike in your hand. That's just like a great card. Let's do that one. Yep, and Proceed. Now we are probably up the next one on here. And you've got a key here for the map, which is fine. So the next one is an enemy. Let's go. Yeah. See, it's really, really interesting. That's that's that right there is nightmare fuel right there. I mean it's a weird sperm monster that I I don't know what happens. It's gonna attack for eleven damage. That's quite a lot, isn't it? You'll see I've lost the health I lost last turn as well. My health didn't magically recover. Um so it's got forty two, so let's just let's just pile on that damage. Let's just keep Pounding him with damage. End turn. I'm going to get hit for 11, I assume. <sighs> there you go. Now, also as well, you'll notice the, the guy doesn't run up and attack you. It's not like... The animation is minimal, but... And there are games where that annoys me. With the minimal animation, kind of like, oh, I don't know what's happening. But it's just enough to make me sort of go, oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, and it's not all compliments as well, because there are there are things I'm going to get to that are a little bit negative. Uh, so let's have a look. So our oh, vulnerability is great. We want vulnerability. And we've got two damage, and then turn, and then the next turn we should be able to finish him off. Come on. There you go. Damage. There you go. And then stuff out of burn. Because our deck's empty, our burn pile gets recycled, which is fine. Uh, deal Whoa. So we don't deal 16 damage. We'll keep that in there. Keep that in the hand. We don't need that much. Yay. Dead as fuck. Yeah, 11 gold. And add a card to our deck, which is applied. Deals 12 damage, applies weak. Apply three, apply three weak and vulnerable to all enemies. Cool, let's do that. Now, we've got fork in the road we can go here. We don't know, or we could go to an enemy. So let's go, I don't know. <laughs> it's dead as fuck. You come across a dead adventure on the floor. Uh, his pants have been stolen. Also, it looks like he's been 
gored and trampled uh, by a horrible by horned beast in fact um though his possession is still intact you're not in mind of the final happening okay so we can loot him and the 25 percent monster's gonna return do that there you go monster's gonna return i was gonna say now this was gonna be one of the negative things i came across this encounter in my last round um my last round my last game and uh i yammered on that button it was like 75 percent chance i was like yep yeah, let's roll and nothing turned up it was like i'm out peace see you later and i was just like was that was that look or does that just not work? I don't I don't know. Um, so I was going to say, I'm not sure if that system works, but obviously it does. So let's fight this fuck out. Let's kill him and take the stuff. So 90 health and I've got 60. So we go, hmm. And how much is he going to attack for? Do we know? No, we don't know. So let's just pound him with two. And we'll put one block on and we'll end turn. So we're just going to mitigate a little bit of damage here. <laughs> Okay, so, ooh, we've got a new one. Apply three. Uh, okay, yay! And then we're going to hit him with one damage. And then turn. Yay! He can't do anything. Then we can see these pop-ups here. Um, weakened, enraged, aggressive. All, this, all the information's there, which is nice. You haven't got to hover over each individual one either. Because that would have got old fast. Uh, so, one. Two attack. One defense and end turn. See, nice straightforward strategy. I'm probably gonna mask it here. No, I should be right. I might be right, or or not, because he hits quite hard. So then we go. Like, do we play defensively now, or do we keep playing offensively? Uh, deal 16 damage. Uh, let's go. We can have that. Yeah, yeah. And we'll also now go another attack. No, I don't think we're right. We're fine. We're gonna take more damage for one turn, which might finish us off actually. It's fine because then we can talk about the negatives. Oh, yeah, weak. He's weak, too. We might, we might be right here. Yay! Violence! Doop -a -doop, -a -doop, doop, -a doop a doop 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 I'm just surprised that went well. I'll be honest. I was surprised. Gold. We've got a Juju bracelet. You no longer encounter monsters in question mark rooms. Cool. Um, add a card to your deck. Uh, what's this one? Deals four damage. See, I don't know what the rest are, but this one's got one punch man on it, so we'll go with it. <laughs> and we've got, obviously, here, we've got things in our, we've got things in our inventory. Which are cool, look, you know, so we can we can safely go to these rooms and not encounter stuff. Now, rather than carrying on playing, because believe me, I could, because I quite like it. Uh, we'll just say, uh, what's wrong with it? Well, <laughs> the fact that I'm not exploring a dungeon, right? Now, this is essentially your dungeon map. This is essentially your exploration map, right? But it's all predefined. Well, I think I feel like perhaps the whole thing should be question marks above, like above the next junction, because I can I can literally look at and plan a route out which maximizes my chance of getting to the end which i know is kind of the point but it also takes the mystery out of it it takes that element out it was like oh no what have i done because i can see an elite here coming here right so I could, i'm going to go here i'm going to go here and then i'm going to turn away from the elite and get to the campfire which is where we rest and regain health and i take this guy take this guy take this guy you know and then and then this one i'm going to dodge the elite and go this way and i know that that's kind of the point they've made but i can get all the way to the end here without taking elites and i know it i think it might be more engaging if like the monster, there's always a chance of an elite, or it's just a mystery from the. So you can see the next jump, but not the one after that, um, because I feel like I feel like this, like you could get yourself in a lovely pickle where you could go here. If there's an elite here, you'd go okay. I'll go here. Oh, I'll go here. There's no elite. And you go. Oh, I can't turn back. There's, you know, you could get yourself in a pickle, and that might add a little bit more like hmm, chin rubbing and decision making to the game. Um, also, uh, if we're talking about criticism, and this is a, this is a kind of minor one, but like things like the potions and stuff. Like, it does not, doesn't take rocket science to figure it out, but it didn't really seem to be covered in uh, in the tutorial. Or if it, at least if it was, I, I, you know, I missed it. And we could, oh, this is another one. We can, from this screen, we can return. Back to the spoil screen. <laughs> it's like, you can go back to the empty screen or come, come here, which just seems like a bit of a, why would you do that? You know, it just seems like a bit of an offset. Um, I'm looking forward to getting, see, back to there again. Jesus Christ. Um... Rewards, yeah, it really wants us to go to the next piece, the next scene. Does look at that? Oh, there we go. That was weird. Uh, yeah, the, the deck building stuff might be really interesting to get into. Let's go back to the main menu. See, so back here again. It keeps bringing me back here. Return. See, so we can't get back to the main menu for deck building. We can't sort of end our run prematurely. Can we escape? No. So we'll just, I guess, we'll just proceed to the next one. Now we know we're not going to encounter monsters here. So as you walk, I love the artwork as well. As you walk into a room, you hear gurgling and grunt. I like the fact the action sounds, descriptive sounds, move like this. I like this. I like this. Uh, it's it's pretty good. Cool. It's all pretty, 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 pretty okay written. It's not not offensive to me. It's it's all right. 
and reach inside and find three. There we go. And we'll just leave. We can't catch a monster, so it took all the edge out of it. You should read those things when you're playing, by the way. And we're back, look, we're back here. Look. Escape always takes you back there. The return button there. You can't just, like, leave, like, mid-menu. mid, mid -menu. We can save and quit. And just do auto Yeah, okay, so we can do that. We can't go back to the main menu, though. And now we load the game from the main menu. Anytime now, trust me. It'll, it'll happen anytime now. I've, I've hit the play button. It's, it's, I feel like it's abandoned. There we go. There we go. It's there. It's a black screen. And someone's playing player in their backgrounds, apparently. Okay, so now we can go to our card library. See, um, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I'd like to be able to like, like get to this screen if I want to go. What's my Reddit collection? You know, I'd like to be able to get back to this mid game. And not have to exit out and come back if I wanted to get back to this, which is not a big criticism. But overall, I would say this game is super enjoyable. And what I've played so far, I have enjoyed the crap out of it. I found it really engaging and interesting. And I genuinely sort of want to get to the top of that spire. I really want to sort of finish a run. And it's got these not just the right amount of roguelike elements where your progression is through your card and your relic collection and stuff. Um, and it's... You know, it's, it's like, oh, no, I fail, I fail, I'll, I'll go again and stand a better chance. It's uh, it's something I've really enjoyed. And uh, I would say patch notes in the game. This is great. Look, patch notes in the game. Look at that. People, developers, do please do this. This is great. I love this. Patch notes in the game. So I'm going to go to Steam and check the list there. I can just in the game go, did they fix something that's different? Oh, there they did. Um, I wonder if this will be taken out after early access. The credits. Yay. It's always nice to see credits because a lot of games you have to finish to see the credits. That's a triple A thing, isn't it? But I like being able to go see credits uh, at the beginning if I wanted to. Like, who worked on that? Let's have a look. Um, it can come up. And then we got profiles. Oh, we got name as well. But we can change profile. Let's imagine that. Anyway, this has been uh, this has been Slay the Spire, a game that I think is super enjoyable. Super enjoyable. What does Steam say like it, actually? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Good work, Steam. Good, good work, Steam, for not recommending the one game that's a lot like it, which is um, Dungeon Rushes. Dungeon Rushes. This game, by the way, great game. Dungeon Rushes is something I've played a lot of, really enjoy it. It's a very similar game, um, but obviously your skills are based on your character, not a random deck. So with this one subverts that a little bit by having the card thing, which is really cool. But uh, Dungeon Rushes, if you like this game, Dungeon Rushes is also worth checking out as well. Um, I've been HexDSL. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, you can support me on Patreon if you want to see more of my videos. You're going to see more anyway if you don't support me. I mean, YouTube aside, if you want to see more of this, do this. No, you're going to see more of it anyway. Let's not let's not beat around the bush here, guys. You're going to see more. There's going to be more videos available. You know, it doesn't depend on anything. It's just it's like I have to do it to get through the day. <laughs> I just it's an addiction at this point. But if you were so inclined, feel free to support me on Patreon. I'll spend the money wisely on video games. And pizza, because it's all I want in life, really, to be happy. Um, I do stream four days a week. You can join me on stream, and you'll find a chat with people and play videos. It's what stream you know what streaming is. Thanks for watching. I've been Hex. Bye.